Disappointing news to report from Welling, where I've just returned um, from their ground, where the Hastings United women's team drew one all with Welling. At the same time, Acorns, our rivals, won their game 2-1. So uh, it's made it a bit tricky for us now because we're four points behind. We've got two games to play. I'm thinking we'll probably win both those two. But if Acorns win their last game, um, we won't be able to get that first place, which probably will put an end to our promotion hopes. But they have got to play Ashford ladies away. Uh, If it's a draw or if they lose, then, yeah, if we win our last two games, it will still be okay. But enough of the disappointing news. It was a fantastic game at Welling, a ground where... Our men's team may well be playing next season. If they get relegated, we'll probably end up going there. Um, it's a game, it's a ground where Hastings United have played a few times before in the past. Nice ground. There was a good crowd there, an enthusiastic crowd. Hastings were missing two of their stalwarts from def- from defence, and Rebecca Ralph and Sophie Reed were both absent. Their, their replacements did a good job, in particular Megan Critchfield, who came in and played as centre-half alongside Rosie Muggeridge and yeah she was very solid and played really well. Welling had some really good players Um, we beat them very easily early on in the season I can at the pilot field but I think Billy did mention that yeah their side has changed a lot since then and they were very well organised their right winger was a real threat all game yeah up and down the right wing good pace and their, one of their forwards, the number eight, was also a handful. So they were a lively side. It, it was a fantastic game. Both teams attacking, um, chances at either end. Welling dominated the early part of the game, and they hit the post with uh, um, that right winger causing a bit of havoc down um, with one of her shot come crosses. Uh, but we held on, and we gradually got into the game, and towards half-time... Um, we we did create a few good chances. Um, you know, don't know how one effort from Molly was cleared off the line, and um, you know we were beginning to look dangerous. And we did score just before half time. Thank you. Yeah, it came from a really good challenge on the halfway line by um, Megan Critchfield, who won a really good tackle. As a result, Molly was set free on the edge of the area and she hit a, a chip shot which went over the top of the keeper's head in, into the goal. So we went in 1-0 up at half-time. The second half was end-to-end as well, both sides attacking and I was always hoping we are going to get that second goal but it didn't come. And then from a very good corner they hit a, hit a cross. Blair spilled the cross. She was under a lot of pressure and um, as she was falling, the ball bounced out of her hands and one of their forwards just happened to be on hand to smash the ball into the roof of the net. So that was one all and yeah, the game continued at a great pace. We Claire Johnson, our, one of our midfield players, number seven, she never stopped running the whole game and uh, she, she put a, a terrific effort. Georgia Tibble, as usual, hit some fantastic passes played well. Molly was very enthusiastic up front. Izzy Burt was very sound at full back. Yeah, and and Sean Heather was well marshalled by the defence, but again, she put in some some good crosses. But a one-all draw was a disappointment as far as the um, the scenario for the end of the season goes, but the whole game was, was fantastic. A credit to the ladies on both teams for providing such good entertainment. I think next week is the crucial game between Ashford and Acorns. And if Ashford could win or get a point in that game, it would do us a great, a big favour. I think Acorns beat Ashford 3-2 in, a, in the home league game. But yeah, they'll be equally matched. And if Ashford have got a strong side out, it may end up all right. Oh,